I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to find maximum or minimum value for a two variable function. The question here is find relative extrema of fxy equals to 2x square plus y square plus 8x minus 6y plus 20. Well as you can see we have two variables x and y. Now in this case to find extreme values which could be maximum or minimum we'll find the partial derivatives. So for the function fxy let's find the partial derivative with respect to x first right so f of x. Now that would be 2 times 2 4 4x this is 0 this will be plus 8 0 and 0. So that becomes the partial derivative with respect to x. Now let's find the partial derivative with respect to y. It will be 2y minus 6. Now for a critical value, so let's find the critical number now. Both f of x should be and f of y partial derivative should be equal to 0. Right? So we'll equate these two to 0. So we have, remember I just wrote 2, so I'll write 2y minus 6 equals to 0. That gives us the value of y as y equals to 6 divided by 2 which is 3 and if I equate 4x plus 8 equals to 0 I get a value as x equals to minus 8 over 4 which is minus 2. So the critical number here is minus 2, 3. So that becomes the critical number for the given situation. Now how do we justify that this results into maximum or a minimum? So that's the next part. So there are a couple of ways to do it. One is which is very difficult and that is to graph. So you could sketch this, right? So it's a three-dimensional figure. So you can sketch this uh, and then figure it out whether it's maximum or minimum. Uh, or you could also sometimes rearrange equation. Or we can do a second derivative, second uh, partial derivative test. So there are actually three ways to, to figure it out. Now uh, let's do it one by one and see how we can actually uh, find the solution for such equation. We already have the solution but we don't know whether it represents maximum minimum or it could be neither also. right? So what we can do here is, uh, well I'll get to partial derivative uh, later. Let's rearrange this equation. So we have this equation f of xy equals to 2x squared. Let me write the x terms together. So we have plus 8x and then y as y squared minus 6y plus 20. Now if you rearrange these values, uh, you get this x term. We can do completing the squares now. So you could write this as 2 times x square plus 4x. Now to make it a perfect square what I can do is I can add and subtract 2 squared. Do you understand? So I'm just making perfect square. Similarly for this half we could do uh, we could do y square minus 6y. Half of 6 is 3 so we'll add and subtract 3 square plus 20. Right. So I'm doing a long method now. I know the result will give me something like this. We get 2 times x plus 4x minus 2 square will be x plus 2 whole square. Then we have minus 2 square which is 4. When I open the bracket 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Here I have y square minus 6x plus 3 square which could be written as y minus 3 whole square minus t square gives me minus 9 and I got plus 20 here. Do you see that? Now so you see there it relates to the value which we got. So what we get here is 2 times 
x plus 2 whole square uh, plus y minus 3 whole square minus 8 minus 9 is minus 17 plus 20 is plus 3. So what you also see is the value of this function for minus 2, 3 is actually equals to, this will be 0 for minus 2, for 3 that would be 0, it is equals to 3. So from the equation you can very easily see that for the value minus 2, minus 3 we are having 3 plus 0, right? These are positive values. Now for any other value, x and y, right? The value is going to be higher. So this value is going to be greater than 3, right? If you don't consider that point A and B, nearby points, the value is greater than 3. That means this results into what? It results into a minimum. Do you understand? So here we have rearranged the equation and provided you with the logic saying that this is indeed a local minimum and in this case it happens to be a maximum a absolute minimum also right so if I have to represent this on a diagram let me do that also for you here let's say we're talking about x y and z axis so three right okay so what we have here is this is this is f of x y Correct. Now, uh, the minimum value which we got is minus 2, uh, 3. That means uh, on this side, we can go minus 2. Let me use a different thing. Okay. So minus 2 means, uh, let's say this is 1 unit, this is 2 unit, and 3 along this side. So 1, 2, and 3, and then 3 up. That is the y value. So we have 1, 2, 3. So that becomes your minimum point. And if you sketch this, it will look something like this, right? It looks something like this. Do you see that? So that figure represents the function f x y, and clearly, this particular point which we have here represents the absolute minimum also, right? So this is that point. Perfect. So that is a representation of the figure. It is not easy to draw these graphs, however, right? So, so we can say that well, in this situation, uh, it was kind of simpler. So we just we just drew this, right? So, so, so it's kind of like this, right? So I hope you understand this 3D figure. Anyway, so that's the that's the origin. This is our x-axis. This is y and z-axis. On z-axis, we represent this function. Now, let me show you how to use the the second partial derivative method to figure this out. So for second partial derivative, we'll actually find the second partial derivative of the function. Uh, so let's find that out. So f of x with respect to x is, in this case, 4x plus 8, derivative is 4. f of y partial derivative, second, is 2. Uh, from the first partial derivative with respect to y will be will be zero, right? So there are no y terms here. Uh, will be zero. <laughs> so that is what we get. Now the second derivative states that uh, the second derivative should be positive for maximum or minimum to occur, and uh, the formula, if you remember, is product of these two take away square of fxy. Now that should be greater than zero for maximum or minimum. And if it is minimum, then this value should be positive, which it is, right? So in our case, we can substitute these values. So f of x, x is four, four times two minus zero square, and that gives us eight. And definitely this is greater than zero. So we do have maximum or minimum right now since f of x x is equal to 4 which is greater than 0 it means we're talking about a case where this is a minimum right 
So we do have a minimum at minus 2, 3. So the answer is that we have a minimum at, uh, at minus 2, 3. And the minimum value for this function is 3. Uh, so minimum at this, so minimum of 3 at, we could write like this, right? Minus 2, 3. Do you understand? So we could use the second partial derivative test to also figure it out. So in this particular example, I've shown you three ways of doing it. Only when the cases are simple, we can do these kind of calculations. However, in most cases, we'll adopt this method of partial second derivative and then find the answer. So I hope this video gives you a good look on how to solve two variable functions, especially to find their extreme values. Uh, let's have a few more examples and then we'll take some application questions. I hope that helps. Feel free to subscribe to my videos, share questions and my videos. Thank you and all the best.